Greetings, comrades! Recently I made a video about people who don't consider Russians to be Slavs, and it sparked quite a heated discussion. So today I'm going to pick a rather controversial topic again, namely the attitude toward people of non-Slavic appearance in Russia. For example, if you speak Russian and have ever tried to rent an apartment in Russia, you've probably come across such a phrase in ads like rent to Slavs only. And yes, it sounds kinda xenophobic. Pretty strange for a country that is home to about 190 ethnic groups, isn't it? Let's discuss where this attitude towards people of non-Slavic appearance in Russia came from, whether it is really a serious problem and in what areas of life it can manifest itself. First, let's define the terms, because outside of Russia there is no such thing as Slavic appearance, for example. There is simply white or Caucasian, but in Russia such division really exists, and even the law enforcement agencies use it. Often in police reports you can find descriptions of suspects as of Slavic appearance or conversely as of Caucasian nationality. For the sake of clarity, let us take the traditionally Eastern Northern European appearance. Light eye skin and hair, small straight nose, and let's imagine that you live in Russia, but you don't look like a person from this picture at all. Would you have any problems in your everyday life? Spoiler, you probably will. First of all, let's reflect on how such a problem could arise in a country with hundreds of ethnic groups. For example, in Yakutia there are Yakuts, they've been living there for hundreds of years and they look like typical Asians. They obviously do not fit the definition of Slavic appearance, but they are Russians. But as I mentioned in the previous videos, there are two words in the Russian language, Ruski and Rossiyanin, and both are translated into English as Russian. The first one means ethnic Russian, the second one just means citizens of Russia. About 80% of Russians are ethnic Russians. Accordingly, you can be a Russian, but not Russian. And this is where such thing as Russian nationalism comes in. I should point out that this whole problem is probably not about racism, but about extreme forms of nationalism or xenophobia. In general, Russian nationalism is an ideology and direction of politics, the underlying principle of which is the idea of the importance of the Russian nation as the highest form of social unity and cohesion of the people. And this nationalism has many forms and manifestations. After all, even Vladimir Putin called himself and Dmitry Medvedev Russian nationalists in 2008. So, nationalism itself is not something inherently bad. The idea of Russian nationalism dates back to the 17th century. Count Sergei Uvarov tried to formulate it proclaiming that orthodoxy, autocracy and peoplehood are Russia's founding elements. It was praised by Dostoevsky, who distinguished the Russian nation from all other peoples and emphasized the special mission of the Russian soul as the bearer of the true Christian faith. And since the Russian Empire was what it was, an empire, the idea of the supremacy of the titular nation over all others was taken as a given. At the same time, the authorities were naturally extremely hostile to the retaliatory nationalism of ethnic minorities, because it could split the empire. After the revolution, the Bolsheviks sharply suppressed the idea of Russian nationalism, countering it with the concept of internationalism. A policy of Kreinizatsia designed to smooth the contradictions between the central government and the indigenous population of the National Republics of the USSR began to be pursued. It was expressed in the creation of national autonomies, led by representatives of local nationalities, in the introduction of the languages of these minorities in the administrative procedures and education, in the encouragement of the publication of the mass media in local languages. The Soviet Union developed the concept of a unified Soviet nation, and the Russian identity had no place in this concept. It was labeled as a relic of a dark imperial past. The RSFSR was not considered to be a national republic, and the Russian population, unlike the population of other Soviet republics, was not considered a bearer of any particular ethnicity. 
that said, the idea itself lived on, especially among Soviet dissidents like Solzhenitsyn. It was them who were concerned about the destruction of Russian historical monuments, the demolition of churches, negative demographic trends and the depopulation of villages. Well, some years later the USSR collapsed and all socialist ideals along with it. It turned out that in many former Soviet republics the local population no longer believed in the idea of a united Soviet nation and did not want to live side by side with the Russians, who had to flee in fear from their own homes. Ethnic pogroms in Chechnya, Tiva and Fergana Valley, as well as the general economic situation, have forced a great many people to turn to parties and movements that have revived ideas of Russian nationalism. The ideas of superiority and the special role of the Russian nation. And in the most extreme forms, explaining everything that happened to Russia in the 90s as a conspiracy of non-Russians against the Russian people. Now remember that Russia has one of the highest immigration rates in Eastern Europe. All of this has created a very explosive mixture, which has led to the situation that when people ask me if cultural racism, xenophobia, intolerance towards other nationalities or something like that exists in Russia, I know for a fact that it does. And I should point out right away that there is discrimination in both directions. If we take some of the existing national republics of Russia, it turns out that ethnic Russians are a minority there, and they find themselves as victims of discrimination too. For example, you arrive in Kazil, and first cab driver there tells you right away, hey, you look like a Russian, so you'd better not go out after 6 pm, and in general better stay in the hotel. But that's a topic for a separate video. Russia experienced a very serious outbreak of racist violence in the 2000s, when an increase of neo-Nazi activity was accompanied by hundreds of attacks and dozens of murders each year. The victims were mostly Africans, Vietnamese and Central Asians. In the next decade, the number of such attacks decreased dramatically, as the state cracked down hard on almost all far-right and neo-Nazi groups. Nevertheless, racially motivated attacks still occur, there were 21 in 2019. Is that a lot for a country of 150 million people? You decide. In any case, the peak of such crimes has passed more than 15 years ago, and today we will talk not about some extreme threats to life, but about more everyday things, about everyday manifestations of discrimination against ethnic and racial minorities in Russia. First of all, it is worth saying that this very discrimination is manifested first and foremost against the peoples of the Caucasus and Central Asia. For various reasons, it is these nationalities that are most frequently disliked by residents of Russia. Well, there's another group also, but come on. In general, nowadays, if you look like an African or a person from East Asia, you are likely to be treated simply as something unusual, exotic. Yes, it is probably unpleasant, but you are unlikely to encounter any explicit hostility or repulsion. The same applies to Europeans, obviously. But the people whose appearance resembles natives of the Caucasus or Tajikistan and Uzbekistan often are treated with prejudice. First and foremost, it is worth noting that this very prejudice often comes from the representatives of the security services. The routine practice of the Russian police is based on so-called profiling, that is, unconscious bias against certain ethnic groups. In the US and European countries, ethnic and racial profiling is considered a form of discrimination and is officially banned. In the USSR and in Russia, though, I have already mentioned the terms person of Slavic appearance, person of Caucasian nationality, and this, by the way, often leads to confusion, because obviously Russians can have dark hair and eyes, and people from the Caucasus can be fair-haired. For example, the killer who shot a Russian diplomat in Abkhazia was first identified as Slavic in appearance, but later turned out to be Chechen. Or, for example, during the search for the suspects of the terrorist attack at the Minsk metro, they were looking for people of North Caucasian appearance, but they ended up being Belarusians. But the police do not care much, and they continue to use these terms in their descriptions. 
Minorities with traditional Central Asian appearance constantly complain that the Russian police perceive them as a potential source of bribes. Either you pay us or we deport you all. It should be understood that, for example, Tuvinians, Buryats and Kalmyks have a typical Central Asian appearance, but are full-fledged residents of Russia. You can't deport them anywhere, it's their home. But they still have to suffer from these prejudices of the police. Plus, there is the perception that migrants and ethnic minorities contribute significantly to crime in Russia. Any crimes in which the perpetrators are people of non-Slavic appearance, let alone illegal migrants, cause a very violent reaction in society. And this is also why Russian police will treat you with suspicion if they do not like your appearance. Another area of life in which this discrimination can be noticeable is employment relations. The Russian constitution prohibits discrimination on the basis of nationality, and in theory employers should evaluate employees according to their professional competence. In practice, this is not always the case. In this sense, an experiment conducted by the Laboratory for Comparative Social Research of Higher School of Economics in 2017 is illustrative. They sent out 9,000 CVs to various companies in major Russian cities, changing only the names of candidates. It turned out that in Moscow and St. Petersburg, candidates with Russian names were invited by employers for an interview in 41% of cases, but representatives of southern nationalities only in 26-29%. It is interesting that in Kazan and Ufa, other large cities, all ethnic groups received approximately the same percentage of responses from employers. However, this pattern is characteristic not only for Russia. In the US, studies show exactly the same results for African Americans. In Britain, for Indians and Pakistani, and so on. And there are also some very funny cases in Russia. For example, a year ago, the Jewish Museum and Tolerance Center placed an ad for a bartender, of Slavic appearance only. It is worth noting, however, that anti-migrant sentiments in Russia today are not like those of radical right parties in Europe. The fact is that there is no stable flow of refugees to Russia. Russia is simply not that interesting to them. Russia attracts two types of migrants. The first are labor migrants from Transcaucasia and Central Asia. The second are international students from not the most developed countries. The former work in low-paid and non-prestigious jobs, so they don't really take out jobs or anything. And the latter study at Russian universities, often in medical and engineering fields. Their education is usually paid for by their own countries. So it turns out that there are actually no migrants who live in Russia on Russian taxpayers' money. This is why attitudes towards them have become quite relaxed. Russians still are not the most welcoming towards them, but the intensity of dislike has decreased a lot. Finally, there is another area of life where you will definitely face discrimination if you do not have a typical Slavic appearance. And that area is rental housing. Yes, the most disliked renters are all from the same places, Central Asia and the Caucasus. Believe me, if you are a rich foreigner who works as a top manager in Moscow and wants to rent an apartment in Moscow city, then you can look like anything, you will have no problems. But the cheaper the accommodation, the more likely it is that you might be rejected because of your appearance. Many landlords have a prejudice that if you rent your apartment to people who look like someone from Central Asia, then one day you'll find the full brigade of 20 people from the neighboring construction site living in your one-room apartment. Or just all of the many distant relatives of the tenant who came to see him and stayed for a long time. In addition, it is believed that people from these regions are less concerned with cleaning and keeping the rented house in order. I cannot say that these stereotypes are completely unfounded, but quite respectable people also suffer from them, such as doctors from Central Asia or Caucasians who were born, grew up and lived all their lives in Russia. Seemingly quite decent and solvent people, but due to some stereotypes of landlords they cannot find accommodation because of their appearance or last name. Recent studies have shown that up to 15% of Moscow rental ads contain the wording only Slavs or something similar. However, it is not clear whether this is a manifestation of xenophobia, because the phrases only without children or only without animals are even more common. Apparently, Moscow landlords simply have too many phobias. 
So that's how this video turned out. To be honest, it is quite a complicated and challenging topic, and I thought for a long time about whether I should release it at all. And I want to emphasize once again that I didn't make this video to tell someone oh look how racist these Russians are, no. This video is rather to show that Russia is not some paradise on earth where hundreds of ethnic groups come together and live in peace and harmony. No, these people do have a lot of grievances against each other, both imaginary and not so imaginary. We can only hope that people will solve these issues peacefully and not with outbursts of violence on ethnic grounds, as it was at the turn of the 20th and 21st centuries.